Purchasing a home is always a calculated decision an individual makes. A home purchase is usually a large check once cut on their lifetime. One of the first questions most property buyers ask is, should I buy an under construction property or should I buy a sub sell one? How do I decide? Yep, we make a video about the difference between under construction and sub sell property. You can watch it somewhere here. And the reason you click on this video is because you're interested in an under construction property, right? Perhaps because of the low entry cost, lower closing fee, the flexibility of unit selection, including your views, your layouts, your fancy facilities, newer technology of construction like earthquake resistance, ceiling slab that gives you a higher ceiling height, and most importantly, everything is brand new. Yep, since it's a brand new property, especially since it's incompleted, you must be wondering, how do you determine lah? Which one is more worth kind of a chase, right? Yep, so today we are going to dive in. We are going to give you three main factors to determine a great project development to choose from. So you have a benchmark when you're viewing a new project development. What's up everybody, welcome to VC, my name is Vincent And I'm Chloe Now, the Malaysian property market has favoured sell and build concept where the developer starts selling before the construction even begins For property buyers, they would usually cross their fingers and hope the best that the property they buy off the plan from the developer is actually good <laughs> Yeah, so therefore, home buyers prefer a well-known developer with a clean track record to trust with their money If they are lucky, they will even get a significant appreciation in value once the project is completed Yep, under construction properties or some would call it off-market primary market are popular among home buyers because the discounts, rebate and the freebies offered by the developer same as you, right? That's why you click on this, right? Here are some key things to look out for purchasing an under construction property. First of all, the possibility of a location. Location is always the first thing that you look at as it is for your convenience or even potential growth and also your rental demand if you're purchasing for your investment property. Now, we have separated two subpoints to determine a good location, accessibility and amenities. Accessibility such as the distance from the project to the highway or public transport such as LRT, MRT, bus station and so on and so forth. LRT and MRT have provided a ton of convenience not only for working class folks but it provides the flexibility to choose whether to catch a train or just drive. Other than that, properties near LRT and MRT usually go up in value, also the rentals too. As the demand for public transport is valuable, you will also have a better exit plan when you plan to sell your property or just rent it out as rental demand is very high when the property is within a walking distance to the LRT and MRT. Yep, also you should look into how many entry points to get into your project. So you wouldn't want to live deep inside the village that takes 18 turns to get to the highway, right? It's so inconvenient. Mm -hmm. How it makes it easy to get to wherever you want to go without the hassle to figure out like random street and complicated routes to your destination. Studies show that a home value increases drastically when the property is connected to a bigger city road system. It makes getting home easier, right? Of course, check the traffic condition on a daily basis and how it would affect your daily commute and routine. The second important factor in a good location is the surrounding amenities. Amenities play a major role in property such as a park, a shopping mall, a grocery store, various eateries, sporting facilities, and many more. It contributes to your pleasure and enjoyment of your occupants. It enhances the quality of social infrastructure and the well-being of residents. Hence, the desirability of demand in a township itself where the infrastructure is well de de developed. Yep, well developed. Imagine living in 20 minutes away from your local grocery store. You'll be extremely frustrated to stay in the location, right? Every day you need to like drive 20 minutes to go buy an egg. And then come back 20 minutes. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Yep, and imagine there isn't any recreational space for you to exercise, easing your long day at work, living like a robot. No, escalating stress level involving your professional life along with the inconvenience of the traveling. This is where amenities in the residential projects should feel like a home more than just a place for you to stay after a long day of work lah, where you can enjoy and relieve the stress in the best possible way. Yeah, not only amenities within the township but also within the property itself. This is why newer projects development nowadays creatively designs great facilities within the residential itself, providing residents with a much better living quality than a hotel. 
facilities that provide to all ages groups such as kids, play area, swimming pool to sporting, and gym facilities to a garden for senior citizens and a lot of landscaping area, whereby residents can enjoy all of these facilities in the heart of the city. Yep, also you can look even deeper into the location transformation in 10 years time. So is the township self-efficient including all of the accessibility and amenities or if it's a new township, what's the direction of the master plan and how it can benefit you living in there for the next 10 years to 30 years perhaps, right? Hence, understand the location and run a weekday or weekend test mm -hmm. to check on the traffic con uh, traffic condition, distance from the project to your favorite place like shopping malls, your favorite sporting faculties or parents or in-laws house for maybe like Saturday night dinner gathering, the kids school and any other thing you can think of. Yeah. After understanding the location, the next thing that you should look into is the developer of the project that you're interested in. As you're looking at an under construction property, just a piece of land or bare structure, how do we actually determine if the outcome of the uh, property is under our expectations? There are a few things that you should acknowledge about the property developer, for example, the developer's recognition and also workmanship. Now let's talk about the developer's recognition first. Firstly, you can check on the developer, have they been awarded any well-known awards such as FIPC? FIPC award is recognized as the project that best embodies excellence in real estate discipline involved in the creation. It sounds, sounds deep, but a simple way to say about it is an Oscar award of real estate developer sector. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you may also check on the developer founder's background and track record and also maybe the develop, uh, developer's uh, reputation, reputation for their previous purchaser. Yeah. So from the internet or forums, you can literally check all of that in the internet nowadays. Yeah, technically, it's always advised to be invested with a reputed uh, developer with a good track record, even though it may come at a premium where you'll be investing in a lower risk for your home purchase. Yep, and also check on the viability of the design, the concept that the developer are trying to propose, or maybe delays in possession and workmanship as well, because it's empty. So whether it is true or not, they're gonna build it like that, this may actually lower down the risk of playing with fire. Speaking about the workmanship, purchasing an uncertainty of the final product, you don't know exactly what it would be like other than watching the fancy 3D rendering of the marketing photos and video clips. Visiting the developer's completed development will contribute solid evidence of their workmanship, quality and also similarity from before launching and also to complete uh, their development. Yep, since you'll be the first owner of the property, every fitting to stove is going to be the best condition knowing that there is no previous occupant served as a peace of mind for you. I can remember that upon the completion, you will have a period to check on the defects and get the developer to fix all of that before starting your renovation. You can check on another video about us uh, checking on defect liability period to understand the process of what's what's after you're collecting the key and then what you need to do. Lah. After choosing your favorable location and also a well-known developer's project, the next thing that you should consider is the unit and the price. Let's discuss on the unit first. Every unit in a high-rise or even a landed house usually comes with a few differences such as land title, layout, size, rooms, directions, views, balconies, and a lot more. Yep, for land title, are you looking for freehold or leasehold property? Certain states in Malaysia don't come with freehold property but it may come with triple nine like 99 years leasehold instead of course you'll be paying premium to own a freehold or triple nine years title leasehold property choosing a land title is varied to your needs are you planning to pass down to next generation mm -hmm. or are you planning to invest a couple years and then trying to exit to earn a profit it really depends on you if you want to know the difference between freehold and leasehold maybe comment down below and we'll probably make one next time yeah layout size and rooms are most common to choose from in a project development most importantly how is the space efficiency in the provided unit layout and size. Here are some questions that you may ask yourself because these are all very personal preference. First thing is, do you want a master bedroom separated from the other rooms? Do you have any preference for feng shui? Do you need a family space on the second floor? How many people will be living in the house? Or including the future ones perhaps? Do you need any special room for your office or hobbies? If you're investing, are you planning to do co-living space to maximize your rental profit? Do you want an open or closed concept kitchen? Do you want to separate the kitchen from dry and wet? Do you want a bigger kitchen or just an efficient one? How many bathrooms are needed? Do you need a balcony? Uh, is there any area for you to dry your clothes? Do you need a lot of storage space? Do you need a maid's room? 
So we can go on and on and on all about this, but it's better for you to sit down and ask yourself, really dive into your needs and wants before making your decision, as if you're becoming an interior designer. <laughs> You can't find a 100% perfect dream home, but you can find a property that is suitable for you or else you'll be never find the right one. Every decision requires a conversation. Just find the one that suits your priority or you, you just pay tons of money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So last but not least, look in the capital and also potential returns from the development itself. If it's a huge master plan, you can check the GDV of the project. GDV stands for Gross Development Value. It is a forecast revenue of sale that is an anticipated from the completed development scheme. Also, what is included in the master plan? Is there any shopping malls included to serve multiple blocks of residential buildings, hotels, uh, maybe parks or offices, hospitals and etc. to make the township itself a sufficient township, just like Sunway City? Yep. Now, how do you determine you are buying on the right price? The easiest way is to survey the surrounding price in the township or maybe nearby properties with the price per square foot. Along with the benefit of an early bird purchaser, the buyer is able to benefit from buying with a lower market value under construction property as the risk is involved. Uh, compared to a completed subset property. If the surrounding is around like 1,000 ringgit per square foot and the property you are buying is only cost 820 ringgit per square foot, which means you are expecting with 180 ringgit square per square foot kind of potential growth, of course, it will be really determined on the value proposition compared to the other properties. For cash flow investors out there, by using the same way of surveying the surrounding rental price and also the value comparison with the other properties, you can roughly estimate the expected rental upon its completion. On an average, for percent of annual rental return is a good return so do keep that in mind yep here are the top three factors that you should analyze before you're buying under construction properties so here's the final note for all of the home buyers or purchasers that never ever purchase any under construction property out there so you need to pay something called progressive interest when you buy this kind of project development progressive interest is the interest that you'll need to pay according to the completed stages which have been released by the bank bear in mind that the payment that you need to make before the 100% of the loan is released is on the interest only. We made a video about progressive interest and you can watch it up here. Yep. Now buying an under construction property can be terrifying as you as a purchaser purchasing an incompleted products. Now there is a lot of advantages too such as low entry costs, various options, brand new unit, latest technology and infrastructure and even a great package by developer. So if you're intended to purchase an under construction development, analyze the project with the three factors, location, developer, unit and price to determine whether it is suitable for you and is it worth it. This can safeguard you and your future financial and ensure that you get a fair deal for your hard earned money, right? Yep, so whether or not you want to purchase a property to stay or invest, you might research sufficiently to ensure you do not buy an overpriced property or property that you have difficulty to resell or put up on rent. Yep, so that's all from us today. Thank you for watching. If you gain some new knowledge from this video, do give us a like and consider subscribing as we post a lot of property related content in this channel. Join the VC family and we will see you in, in the, the next, next video. video. Ciao! Ciao.